How do we find the area under a graph? In the previous video, we saw a particular example. Let's think about how to do it in general. So here's some function, whatever the function is. I, I don't know, it doesn't matter. This is some function y equals f of x. And I want to figure out what is the area under this graph. And so what we're going to do is we're going to play this game we've been playing of saying we can approximate this area with rectangles. And here I'm just going to draw a few, but remember the game is we get better and better estimates by having more and more rectangles. And okay, so, so these rectangles didn't turn out so well. They, they should have all been the same width. So we're just going to imagine these are all the same width. Okay, so I don't know how many rectangles there are. We're going to say there's n rectangles here. There's n rectangles. Um, these happen to be right endpoint rectangles. Although you could play the same game with left endpoint rectangles. It would also, you could also work out. And so I have these n rectangles. And I want to find the area of the rectangles to approximate the area of the graph. And then I'm going to have more and more and more of them to give it a better and better approximation. So let's figure out the area of these rectangles. Since there's n of them, each one will have a width. Well, let's think. The total width here, the total width is b minus a. So when I come and I think about my width, my, my total width is b minus a. But since I have n rectangles, the, um, each rectangle will have width b minus a divided by n. For this first rectangle, this first rectangle right here, it is at the point a plus one copy of the width. It's at the point a plus one copy of the width. So plus one copy of b minus a over n. That's what this point right here is. But to figure out the height of the rectangle, to figure out the height of the rectangle, what I need to do is I need to plug that into my function. So I need to take that and plug it in to my function. So the first rectangle has width b minus a divided by n and height, whatever a plus one copy of the width is, plug into my function. How about this next rectangle? So that gave me the first rectangle. How about the second rectangle? For the second rectangle, it's gonna have the same width, b minus a over n, but now the x value is a plus two copies of my width, two copies of this width, b minus a over n. Why two copies of that width? Because I have to move over two times from a, two widths to get to the second one. And again, I plug it into my function to get the height. That gives me the second rectangle. I'm gonna continue this game. Width times height, width times height for each of the rectangles until I get to the last one. So the last one will again have width b minus a over n. And then I start off at a, and now I've moved over, I'm at the last rectangle, there's n of them, so I'm at the nth rectangle. So I've moved over n copies of the width where my width is b minus a over n b minus a over n. Incidentally, if you simplify this last one, what do you get? n times b minus a over n, that's just b minus a, a plus b minus a, that's just b, which is exactly where I should be for the last one. So that lines up exactly like I wanted to. When I move over n times, I move from a to b. So this, this is looking good. It's also looking, you know, maybe a bit chaotic. So let's try to, let's try to simplify it a little bit. Each one of these has a b minus a term, so I can factor out that b minus a over n. I pull it out, and what am I left with? I'm just left with the sum of these functions. I can use my summation notation to say it's the sum from i equals one to n of f times, it's just gonna be this guy plus this guy plus this guy. What's changing each time? Well, my i is just counting how many copies of the width, from one copy to two copies to n copies. So it's the sum of f of a plus i copies, this is my index, of b minus a over n, where I'm summing it up from one copy to two copies, all the way up to n copies. Here is my formula. If I want to know what the exact area comes out to be, well, I can get an approximation by plugging in a big value of n. Plug in n equals 100. 
plug in n equals 1,000. But if I want the exact area, the exact area will come out to be, let me move this over a little bit, is what happens when I take the limit as n goes to infinity. So here is my formula to find the area under the graph. Now, this formula may not look too friendly, so let's try to do a concrete example to see how we can use it. So let's, let's pick an actual function now. So what's a, what's a good function to play with? Let's do something like, oh, how about y equals 2x minus x squared. So the, the minus in front of the x squared tells you it's an upside down parabola. This is an upside down parabola, something like that. And it crosses the x-axis at two points here at zero and here at two. And I'm going to want to know the area under this graph from zero to two. Let's figure out what is this area? What is, what is this area from zero to two? The, the parabola keeps going down, 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 but I just want to know what is the area between the graph and the x-axis from zero to two. Okay. That's the area I want to solve for. And, and I'm not gonna draw a bunch of rectangles this time, I'm just going to use the formula. So let's see how to use this formula. We should have that the area, maybe, maybe I should do the area in green since the color green. The area will be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of b minus a over n. What's your b and what's your a? Well, your a and your b are just your, your um, x value, so we're going from zero to two, so it's the area of two minus zero all over n, which of course simplifies just two over n. It's the limit of this times the sum, the width times the sum of the heights, where the heights are going from one to n of your function. Begin at a, well my a is just zero, plus your index i times b minus a, two minus zero all over n. Okay, that, that inside can be simplified quite a bit. This, this inside is just, is just the same thing as i times two over n, right? So that's just i times two over n. That's what I wanna solve. What is f? f is whatever your particular function is. Here my f, is 2x minus x squared. So this sum is asking me for the sum. It's two over n, the limit as n goes to infinity of two over n times the sum of f, f is 2x minus x squared. So 2x, this inside is my x value, two times i times two over n minus x squared. So this is my x value i times two over n squared. So I'm just plugging this in, I'm taking this and plug it in for x. I just plug that in to my function. So now I'm finding the sum of this from i equals one to n. We can simplify that a little bit. So that gives me the limit as n goes to infinity. Remember, we can, we can distribute the summation leaving just the i pieces. So like here I can pull out the n and the two over n to give me a four over n times the sum of i, where i goes from one to n, minus, here it's gonna become an i squared now, we have a sum of i squared, because this i is being squared, and I'm pulling out a four over n squared, because I square this, it's four over n squared, I already have a two over n, so two times two squared, two times four is eight, and this n times this n squared I pull out to get n cubed. Okay, just simplifying that sum a little bit. Why did we do that? We did that because these are now set up for our summation formulas. Remember, we have formulas that the summation of, of i from i equals one to n, we know is just n times n plus one divided by two. And the summation of i squared is, is just n times n plus one times two n plus one all over six. Okay, we'll see if we run out of space here. I think we're good. So where we're at now is this is just equal to the limit 
as n goes to infinity, a 4 over n times n times n plus 1 all over 2 minus 8 over n cubed. Okay. Whew. Let's try to calculate these limits. This is just the limit as n goes to infinity of this first guy is 4n squared plus 4n on top and a 2n. Ah, something went wrong. This shouldn't be 2n. Ah, this was 2 over n should have been multiplied by 2 times 2 over n. So this first piece should have been 2 times 2 times 2. This should have been an 8. And this n times this n should have been an n squared. So this should actually be an 8 over n squared. This should be, okay, that's going to change this. This is now 8, 8 over 2n squared. Good, caught that. Minus the second piece, 8 times n times n times 2n is 16n cubed plus, plus some smaller powers of n. But it doesn't actually matter what the smaller powers are because remember, when we calculate the limit, we just look at the ratio of you know, smaller powers don't matter. Smaller powers don't matter. We just look at this ratio and this ratio as we look at the limit as n goes to infinity. So we end up with 8 over 2, which is 4, minus 16 over 6, or 8 over 3 if we simplify. 4 is 12 over 3, so we end up with 4 over 3. There's my area. I just took these ratios, 8 over 2 minus 16 over 6, and simplified. So this area under this curve, this area came out to be exactly 4 over 3. This process, this formula is called, um, it's a Riemann sum, named after the mathematician Riemann. It's, it's finding the area by approximating it with more and more and more rectangles. We don't draw the rectangles every time. Instead, those rectangles are baked in to this formula. And the key step here is by plugging it into your function and then rearranging so we can use our summation formulas. <clears throat> for polynomials, this works out really, really well because we have summation formulas for the sum of i, the sum of i squared, the sum of i cubed. So if it's, if it's functions of x or x squared or x cubed, we can, we can figure out what it is. If it's instead some function like sine or cosine, well, we're gonna get stuck. We'll have something like f of sine of i, and we don't have a summation formula for that. But this method, it'll work well to find the area under any kind of polynomial with x, x squared, x cubes, any cubic polynomial, you'll be able to use this formula, this process with.